solar system there are eight planets which used to be nine but later we discovered that Pluto is considered as a dwarf planet by the NASA. Like our solar system there are millions of solar systems in our galaxy and the universe is made up of billions of galaxies. Our observable Milky Way is spread in about hundreds of light years across the galaxy but still is there a possibility of other life forms existing in this galaxy? Or we are all alone by ourselves in this whole universe? The probability of finding intelligent life form outside our solar system is still pretty high when it comes to the enormous number of planets present out there circling around their own stars. The satellite telescope launched by NASA in 2009 Kepler has discovered thousands of planetary systems outside our solar system. The primary mission of this telescope was to discover planets which can or might have the highest probability of extraterrestrial life forms and to search a solar system which has a planet identical or similar to Earth with water and rock lands to stand onto. The planet has to have an atmosphere to sustain intelligent or bacterial life form. But to have an atmosphere and water at liquid state, the planet has to orbit its whole star in the Goldilocks zone. The Kepler telescope has found a lot of planets out of which some other planets which are orbiting the stars in the Goldilocks zone. Whereas some planets are so close to their stars that their surface do have oceans but the oceans are made up of extremely hot boiling lava. Such planets from space do look like the land would be the surface of hell. Some planets are so far away from their stars that the whole surface of the planet is frozen ice. The temperature is so low that even the atmosphere has been condensed in the form of ice and settled on its surface. A few planets are so big that the whole planet is made up of water. Just imagine the planet with no land to step onto even if there is land it is so deep down below the ocean that it is just not feasible to reach the ocean floor. And the pressure created on the ocean floor is so intense that water is almost solid not because it's just ice because of the enormous pressure created by the water above it. The same phenomenon is experienced on the earth in the famous Mariana Trench which is the deepest ocean floor on the planet till this time. The distance from the surface of the ocean to the surface of the ocean floor is measured to be a mind-boggling 11.34 kilometers or almost 7 miles. At this depth, that water is 10% denser than at the surface. Reaching this depth by scuba diving is impossible. But even if somehow you teleported yourself down there without wearing any safety equipment, you would die in about tenth of a second because of this intense pressure created on your body parts. A lot of planets with gas atmosphere is also discovered by the telescope. But the speed of the wind in these planets are so high that no structure on earth can withstand that amount of pressure. The highest wind speed ever recorded on Earth during a storm was 345 kilometers per hour or 215 miles per hour. In the eastern Pacific Ocean, by both sustained winds and a central pressure created by a hurricane named Patricia. And the world record for nearly 62 years was held by Mount Washington, New Hampshire. For the fastest wind gust ever recorded on the surface of the earth, 231 miles per hour, recorded on 12th April 1934 by Mount Washington Observatory staff, which is about 20 times less than some of the wind speeds ever recorded by the Kepler telescope on the Kepler planets. A planet named as Kepler-186f has been discovered in the year 2014 on 19th of March and was made public on 17th April 2014. The planet is about 11% larger in radius than Earth, giving a volume of about 1.37 times that of Earth.
A very wide range of possible masses can be calculated by combining the radius with density derived from the possible types of matter from which the planet can be made of. For example, it could be a rocky terrestrial planet or a lower density ocean planet with a thick atmosphere. Planets with a radius of more than 1.5 times that of Earth tend to accumulate the thick atmosphere which make them less likely to be habitable. The planet is located about 582 light years away from the Earth and it's orbiting a red dwarf star which is having a luminosity of about 5%. When compared to our Sun, red dwarfs emit a much stronger extreme ultraviolet flux when they are young than later in life. The whole star is about 4 billion years old about 600 million years younger than our sun. The temperature of the star is 3755 Kelvin degrees and our sun's temperature in comparison is 5778 Kelvin degrees. One year on Kepler 186f would be about 129.9 days in comparison to one year on the Earth. The habitable zone for this system is estimated conservatively to extend over distances receiving from 88% to 25% of Earth's illumination. Kepler 186f receives about 32% of light from its host star, placing it within conservative zone but near the outer edge similar to the position of Mars in our solar system. Kepler 186f's location is within the habitable zone but that does not ensure it is still habitable. This is also dependent on its atmospheric characteristics which are still unknown. However, Kepler 186f is too distant for its atmosphere to be analyzed by existing telescopes. The stars host four other planets discovered so far. Although Kepler 186d, C, D and E, named in order of increasing orbital radius, being too close to their star, are considered too hot to have liquid water. Also the four innermost planets are probably tidally locked. Tidally locked means one side of the planet always faces its host star and the other side is always in the dark. Just like how our moon is tidally locked to our earth. But Kepler 186f is in a higher orbit where the star's tidal effects are much weaker so the time could have been insufficient for its spin to slow down significantly. Because of the very slow evolution of red rocks, the age of the Kepler 186 system was poorly constrained. Although it is likely to be greater than a few billion years, the chance that it is tidally locked is approximately 50%. Since it is closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun, it will probably rotate much more slowly than Earth. Its day could be weeks or months long. The SETI Institute's research for extraterrestrial life, the Allen Telescope Array, had listened for radio emissions from the Kepler 186 system for about a month. As of 17th April 2014, no signals attributed to extraterrestrial technology were found in that interval. However, to be detectable, such transmissions, if radiated in all directions equally and thus not preferentially towards the Earth, would need to be at least 10 times as strong as those from Arkivo Observatory. Another search undertaken at the crowdsourcing project SETI Live reports inconclusive but optimistic looking signs in the radio noise from the Allen Array observations. Given the interstellar distance of 582 light years, the signal would have left the planet many many years ago. As we are currently watching its past, it is likely possible that it may have developed life form to this day. The image or details received by us till this date is basically what happened on that planet about 582 years ago, which should be enough time for evolution of a simple single cell microorganism. As the research still continues with other solar probes, the discovery of extraterrestrial life is still yet to happen. And as always, thanks for watching.